On this episode, the spotlight is on Mary Gaucher, a highly acclaimed, well-respected songwriter who has written songs that were recorded by Jimmy Buffett, Tim McGraw, Blake Shelton, and a lot more. One of the things I love the most about what she has to say is a timeless principle that I've been talking about for years that's often overlooked by aspiring musicians. So pull up a chair, you're going to want to check this out. I'm Bob Baker, and this is the Music Marketing Podcast, Episode 111. Welcome to the Music Marketing Podcast, where I share marketing and career advice for musicians, singers, songwriters, and music business pros just like you. If you don't already, please subscribe to the audio podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you consume such products. And if you're catching the YouTube version, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel there. So back in August, I attended and was a mentor at CD Baby's DIY Musician Conference in Nashville. And one of the keynote sessions featured Mary Gaucher, who, honestly, I wasn't all that familiar with prior to the conference. She was interviewed on stage in front of a live audience by Kevin Bruner, who I featured a couple of episodes back. He's the vice president of marketing for CD Baby and an accomplished musician himself. So I'm going to highlight three different segments from that interview and then come back in between and give some color commentary. This first part is near the beginning of the interview where Mary talks about age and then it ends up pointing out this crucial element that we're really going to hammer home on this episode. So listen up. Things are going well for you. You're very busy. And you're playing the Grand Ole Opry next week. And you just showed me a tweet from Boy George who's going to cover one of your songs. Things are just cranking for you. Let him tell you there's an age <laughs> limit on this business. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't expect uh, that at 55 years old, I feel like I'm just getting started. But at 55 years old, I feel like I'm just getting started. <laughs> Since you brought age into the picture... Um, I think it's important. Yeah, well, I think it's great. I think it's also very encouraging. It's always been encouraging to me to hear how you've, you've talked about... You didn't even write your first song until you were 35. And I right. know a lot of artists feel that constant struggle. I'm getting too old. I'm not cool for the young kids anymore. And, but it's, it's a lifelong journey that can start at any point and lead to some amazing places. Yeah, you know, my experience has been, uh, I started lo- much later than, than uh, people would imagine possible for, for a songwriter. I mean, I didn't start till I was 35. So um, I came to Nashville at 40, and it was a- I was able to, to make it work. I, I think that uh, the- this myth about the business is all about young people, that- that- that's not true. Uh, the the business is all about connecting with hearts and souls, and if you do that, people will give you money. That's been <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems to be the recipe. Yes. You make them laugh, make them cry, make them dance, make them sing, and they give you money. It's a it's a deal <laughs> we make. So there were a lot of gems in that segment. I love what she had to say about age. It really is never too late to start. There is this myth about appealing to the young. And here's the deal. I mean, if you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s even, and you're involved in music and writing and recording or performing, you are most likely not writing songs for or trying to appeal to people in their teens and 20s. Quite often, since the music is an extension of you you're going to be attracting people of a similar mindset and a similar age. So don't worry about appealing to the young. Appeal to the people that you resonate with, and quite often they are the same or near the same age as you. Not always, but I think most of the time that's the case. But the real magic of what she said there came at the end, where she talks about the music business, or songwriting, being an artist, is all about the business of connecting with hearts and souls. And it sounded kind of funny, but it's true. You do that and people will give you money. She also said, if you make people laugh, cry, dance, or sing, they will reward you. In other words, people need to feel something. You need to create an experience for them. And if it's an impactful one, they'll be more than willing to part with their money to support you. 
That's the first time she mentions this, but it comes back around. So get ready, because we're going to hammer that point home. Let's listen to the next section where she talks about taking the independent approach to her career. So you've been indie for a while. You've been a strong advocate of the indie approach. And uh, how have you adapted as the, the music business has changed over the years? I mean, back in the day, you were signed to a major label, so you've had that experience as well. And you're very hardcore about owning your career. And I think you've even called yourself the CEO of your career. I'm definitely the CEO. <laughs> I am the CEO. Um, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I'm the boss of me. That's the great thing about uh, being independent. See, I came to the music business from the restaurant business. So I did have experience um, in, in business. Um, I found investors who put some money into an idea and we opened a restaurant in Boston. And then we opened up another one and they were, they were successful for, for a little over a decade. So when I walked away from all that to become a full-time singer-songwriter, I had some business experience. Um, and I think that that really matters. To, to understand that, that this is a business uh, and that understanding uh, what, it, what, what fuels it. Um, and, and it's, I, I still, the business itself has changed form so many times since I've been doing it. But the bottom line is still, if you can connect with people's hearts and make them laugh and make them cry and make them dance and make them sing, they're gonna give you money. This is what we're up to. We got to write songs that people resonate with, that lets them forget about everything except for that song when it's being played. Uh, and if we can do that, uh, we, we, get to, we get to keep doing it, I think. Well, it's obvious that Mary embraces the DIY, do-it-yourself, independent approach, which is music to my ears, because I definitely approach my own career in the same manner. And it was cool that she pointed out that she ran a restaurant for 10 years and how that background gave her a perspective on the business aspect of her music career and how she could apply those business skills to music. So this is really important. Even if you've never run your own business, you've probably had day jobs and it's a good chance you maybe you have one now. And whether you were satisfied with the day job or not, the point I'm trying to make here is nothing goes to waste. So even if you worked in an office or a factory or had to do something just to make money and support yourself, most likely, whether you knew it or not, you're picking up skills that you can apply to your creativity. So nothing is wasted in life. Everything you do, including the drudgery of a day job, can be used to your advantage. So yes, it helps to have a business mindset along with your creativity if you want to build a real career. And again, she came back to the emotional impact of her music, and she used the same four words, make people laugh, make people cry, make people dance or sing, and they will want to give you money. She says that it's important to write songs that resonate with people, that help them forget their problems. So yes, as a musician, you're not just writing nice songs, you're helping people escape from whatever is burdening them. You're giving them a vacation from the things in life that are weighing them down. Don't take that lightly. And she says if you consistently do that, deliver that benefit, make them feel something, give them an experience, then you can keep making more music. Awesome. Okay, in this final segment, Mary talks about the importance of the song. And she comes right back around to the importance of capturing hearts. And how when you take this approach or have this perspective on music... It's timeless. It doesn't matter what the delivery method is. Well, you'll see. Just listen. I, I really think that this is about the song. When I first came to Nashville, I had a mentor, and his, his name is Ralph Murphy. He was the uh, vice president over at ASCAP. And he's a dear friend of mine now. He's retired, but I love him. And he always used to say that the music business is an inverted pyramid and that everything rests on the song. And I think that's true. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. I think that's true. If, if you write a song that captures uh, people's hearts uh, and, and they, they want to hear it again and again and again, you're in business. We complicate it more than it needs to be, I think. 
by thinking it has to do with the format that the music's delivered in. I mean, how many formats have there been now? Many to count. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's just format after format, you know, uh, it looks like digital downloading is going away and Spotify now is the thing. So the way that we get the songs to the people changes all the time. Every generation is another format. But the way that songs work hasn't changed at all. You tell the truth and you make people feel it and they go, thank you. And they get the chicken skin, which is what the Dutch call it. It's when the hair stands up on your arm uh, and you feel the truth resonate in your flesh. Uh, when a song hits you like that, you just can't help it. You pull your wallet out and give the person who wrote it money. <laughs> And so how we get those songs to the people changes, but the way that songs and music works on a human being hasn't changed since the beginning of time. Yep, yep, yep. There's a so much wisdom in those words. I love it. It is about the song. If you can write songs or create experiences that really touch people and make them want to hear that and experience it again, you're going to have a long-lasting, successful career. I love how she says we complicate things. Human beings always want to make things more rigorous. It doesn't have to be this focus on those basics. Focus on fans. Focus on delivering an emotion, a feeling, an experience. And it's great that she talked about how the delivery methods change. The way that people uh, get music used to be through the radio, and it used to be vinyl, and then it was CDs, and then digital downloads, and now it's streaming. It's confusing, but none of that matters as long as you stay focused on what's most important. And I love how she says the way that songs work hasn't changed at all. Man, that is comforting to me. She says, tell the truth, make people feel something, give them goosebumps. Again, anytime you can get a physical or emotional reaction out of people that's an improvement over their state of mind, they will reward you. They'll pull their wallets out, as she said. And this is brilliant how she talks about even though the formats change, the way that human beings interact with music has not changed and it will never change. So stay focused on the timeless principles of music and how you connect with other people and everything else will get a lot easier. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What did you think? If there's a way to leave a comment here, do so. Or you can even shoot me an email. Just send your note to bob at bob hyphen baker.com don't forget that hyphen or dash in between my first and last name bob at bob hyphen baker.com would love to hear from you and in addition to that i want to encourage you to get on the music marketing vip list speaking of email i'll even give you a collection of music promotion ebooks and tip sheets when you do just go to thebuzzfactor.com, click the Music Marketing Secrets image on the right, then enter your name and email, and boom, you're on the list. Again, that's at thebuzzfactor.com. And if you'd like to support my ongoing efforts to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash bobbaker, without the hyphen there, all these links and the stuff I talked about will be in the show notes of the podcast or in the video description on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. Please share this podcast or this video with your friends who could really use a boost of inspiration. Thanks for all you do to create great music and share it with the world. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now. <laughs>